What's up all you cool kids? This is Daisy Collins of Tsunami Rose Planet, coming at you live from my craft room here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as I do Monday through Friday, bringing you drunk journal content and videos. So if that's what you're into, please do subscribe and give me a little thumbs up on this video. It would really help me out. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me today. Sorry, I apologize that I didn't go live last night. I had a late night dinner and it went on way into the night. <laughs> so I um, didn't have time to go live yesterday. But today, hi, Miss Patricia. Miss Patricia, I've been trying to get a hold of you on Facebook. I believe I messaged the correct account. Uh, perhaps you could check because uh, Miss Jude, uh, she purchased the Butterfly Kisses journal for you. So I need your address to send it out to you if you can believe that. She's so generous, so kind that she wants me to send it to you. So contact me. Anyways, uh, last you saw me, I was getting the covers prepped for the journals. Uh, they are, uh, they have been sanded down. I have reinforced the cereal box. It is a cereal box with its spine. Uh, however, I do reinforce it with other cereal boxes. And I was actually able to look in my own drawers and find extra cereal boxes. So I do have six covers here that I made. Um, and I finished off the, the other two that, did, that I didn't make while I was live. And so that is what we're working with. I'm making six patchwork journals. Again, this is part number two. She is, isn't she? This is part number two. Uh, right now, I am working on the fabric patchwork covers, which I have actually made live in another video. They Basically, what I did was I sewed these little, um, they were actually strips. I sewed these strips onto receipt paper took off the receipt paper, and then I sewed all those strips together. So that is how I got this more like a uniform shape than, than I uh, have in the previous past. And uh, basically, I, all I had was these uh, pieces of the patchwork. Um, what I did do throughout the weekend was I worked on the other covers. Um, but what I also did was I was able to scan them. So I've had people request in the past that I scan my, my uh, patchwork covers. So I went ahead and did that. They are available in my shop as a printable. And they just look so cute. <laughs> I love them. I did uh, do the patchwork covers in different colors. This one is like a neon orange. And different stitches. This is a zigzag stitch, which I'll be doing again today just because it's quick. Uh, but this is a neon orange. I did this um, like burgundy color and I did, uh, I don't think this is the blanket stitch. It's like this, I call it fish bone, but I'm sure that's not what it's called. Anyways, I did that. I did that two times this one. This is what I call the Frankenstein stitch. So it has, you know, the stitches or blanket stitch, whatever it's called. It has the little stitches going in all directions. I did the same thing in green in this, like, uh, it's what I call a little mermaid green. And I love this one. Actually, this one is awesome. Hi, Miss Tanya. How are you? Good morning. Isn't this one beautiful? I loved it in green. I thought that one, honestly, that one's my favorite. And then I also did a light purple. Just so you can see, it's like a very light purple. I love it. And I did the, the V stitch with that too. So um, I'll show you how I got to this point right here where I was able to sew on there. I am going to show you with the last uh, cover that I need to get done, which is this one right here. Uh, which box I numbered these boxes, the, the books, and then I also numbered patchwork fabric. So I know which one goes to which one because they're not all the same size. So this one's going to go with this one because this one's not numbered. <laughs> I'll probably number it right now. This one is six. Okay. Just so I know which cover goes to which patchwork uh, later on in the process. Hi, Miss April. How are you? <laughs> For Tanya, it's 5.45, 5.54 in the morning. <laughs> it is uh, 10.55 here today, Tuesday morning. Um, so I went ahead and left about uh, an inch all the way around. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I made my other one smaller and I kind of regret it now. 
I need to get this measurement down before I um, make my next batch of covers. Every journal, uh, <laughs> every collection I make, uh, I figure out something that I should have done. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to use heat and bond light. And I could leave a link to the heat and bond light, light if you'd like to check it out in the Etsy shop. Not Etsy shop, in the... <laughs> In Amazon, on my shop, oh my God, on Amazon. So that you can, uh, we can all be on the same page as to what I'm using. I'm using Heat and Bond Light. And uh, uh, this one's in five yards. I have a bigger roll. This one's in five yards. You wanna check it out on Amazon? Basically, it's an iron-on adhesive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, there's a layer of glue on this sheet right here. And that glue is going to be put onto the back of my fabric. And then I'm going to glue that to paper. So let's do this here. Uh, normally what I would do is I would cut this out. I thought it was art. I don't know why I put my... I have my ironing pad here in front of me. And then I have my um, cutting pad underneath, which I normally wouldn't suggest that you use together. However, if I'm just going to do one cover, it's fine. My um, iron pad is pretty thick. So you want to even feel the heat, at least with one cover. I've tried to do about three covers, and then it starts to feel a little warm on the uh, cutting pad. So then I took, I took out away my cutting pad. I took away my cutting board. Anyways, okay, so we're just going to cut out a piece of the heat and bond so that it encompasses the fabric piece here. And I love this uh, met this uh, ruler here. It's awesome. I don't think they have it in shop yet again, but it is a uh, I think it's six by eighteen. Six by eighteen. I like this size. Okay, so now we have that. We have that the size of the patchwork. Get my iron pad underneath here. Beverly. These I got my Bible journal and experience. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, April. I appreciate your support. And I'm so happy to hear that you liked it. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron on the back of this, actually. So it's directly on the glue and not just on the fabric. I have my iron set to the hottest setting. And I'm going to lay the iron down for about 30 seconds. And then what we're going to do is we are going to lift and move it. You don't want to slide it at this point. You want to lift and move to its next destination. Again, 30 seconds. I do go over it a couple times just to be safe. And you will see that the fabric becomes more clearly seen, more visible against the paper where uh, the iron has already melted the adhesive. Gonna move it along here. Good morning. I can't believe it's morning. It's not, it's not even 11 a.m. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, oh yeah, I actually woke up at six in the morning and uh, I've already had a nap. <laughs> I woke up at six in the morning. I scanned my uh, patchwork papers put them up for sale, and then I went back to connect. <laughs> Hi, Miss Vanessa. How are you? Hello, hello. Welcome, you guys. So happy you're all here. I apologize about, I apologize about uh, last night. Like I said, I had a late dinner, and I just, <laughs> just came, I came home late. Everything was late. But the dinner was great, so. <laughs> Dinner, we had sushi. I love sushi, you guys. I love sushi so much. Again, we're gonna melt the adhesive here. I'm glad you're good, Vanessa. Let's get this heat on here. Again, you can see the, the fabric has basically like adhered to the adhesive, so it's like stuck to the, the heat and bond. 
if you don't see strong colors coming through, then you know you haven't uh, melted all the adhesive. I'm going to go around it one more time. And it should be good. We could also tell by looking. Oh, shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. I forgot to put my. <laughs> okay, don't do what I just did, children. Okay. You need a piece of parchment paper because now what I've done is I have done what I didn't want to do, which is add adhesive to my uh, ironing pad. That is a very newbie move, Daisy. Okay. All right. So here's what happened. I uh, left my heating pad, my ironing pad here exposed to the glue around the edges here. What you want to do to avoid that is use a piece of parchment paper underneath and then that will stick to the parchment paper. Oh my God. I was able to pick it off, but that's like one of the things you should not do. <laughs> you need a piece of parchment paper underneath so that way the glue doesn't stick to whatever you're ironing on. Okay, Daisy, hello. Tip number one. <laughs> This long, I need tissue paper for my nose. It's already started, y'all. Oh my god, it is early. It's too early for this. Okay. And we're getting it all uh, glued. Getting back to this fabric. Basically going to turn it into paper. I'm so excited. And then tonight we'll put the covers on the journals. Or I'll work on the inside cover. I haven't decided. <laughs> I'm going to do either one of those two. Melting it again. Don't slide it around. You want to move it. Pick it up and move it. How is everyone today? This fabric, this patchwork, I probably made about maybe over six months ago now. <laughs> I'm trying to cool it down so the glue sticks to the uh, heat and bond paper, not the parchment paper. You can take off the glue that gets stuck to the parchment paper with your finger. Okay, let's okay. You can feel it when there's play. You can literally feel it. It's smooth up until that point, and then it gets rough. You can tell where you need to take off the glue. Okay, anyway, so that is that. And I'm going to go over the top of this. I really want to make sure this glue is on here. So I'm going to go over the top of it. Again, I'm going to do the same thing, lay it down for 30 seconds, and then move it. So this is kind of a time-consuming part of this journey here, because you're just sitting here ironing. <laughs> and I have to do this to this, and then do it to paper. So it's, it's a slow process. And then, of course, the patchwork fabric is the slowest process of everything. <laughs> That's why it takes me so long. Like I said, this is about from about six months ago. And I was working on patchwork journals from a year ago. <laughs> so my work is always, you know, a little slow to come to fruition, but it does get done. <laughs> if they do eventually all become journals. <laughs> Sometimes I don't work it. I don't work in sequence. This is like my craft room, so... One day I want to work on this, another day I want to work on that, and so I don't go in sequence, right? Sometimes it happens. Sometimes there's like a year between each project. Sometimes it's six months. Sometimes it's two days. I don't. I just try to have fun here. And do my little thing. Okay. So now 
we are good and we can um let me just cool it down a little bit off camera i'm just moving it up and down just so it cools down quicker okay now i can peel off the fabric from the back of the heating bond Now there's no texture left on this paper. I don't know if y'all were here. You can see the texture before, but you can't see it now. Because it now has transformed onto a layer of glue. You see that? A layer of glue behind my fabric. Okay. So now I have a piece of uh have uh, various pieces I guess. <laughs> this is packing paper, which everybody's heard of packing paper. It is the paper that when you go to the store, if you buy dishes, they'll put layers of this paper in between the dishes. If you move, you use the stuff to pack your boxes up with. It's packing paper. They have it everywhere. They have it at Walmart. They have it on Amazon now. Um, and I like to use this like light gray. If I had, if I could get this in white, I would. But it's like a light gray. And um, basically, you could use tissue paper for this part if you really wanted to. You could use tissue paper. Um, however, tissue paper, if your fabric is like light um, and not a heavy fabric, like you could see through the fabric. Um, then it's going to show whatever you have on underneath it. So, like, I used to use the tissue paper, and I would cover books with, like, real books. And the color would show through the fabric. And so I would either have to paint the cover of the book, so that way it's white to begin with and we're all good, or I would have to um, change the, t the tissue paper to something that's more opaque. And so um, that's when I decided to try packing paper. And uh, I've been really working with that ever since. Now, since now you're not on the plastic backing, you could move it around if you really wanted to. But I still place it down on one, one spot for about 30 seconds. And then on this packing paper, I don't even like move it around. And so basically this just adds a layer of thickness to your, another layer of thickness to your cover. Like I already have it reinforced, but we're gonna add yet another layer of paper. And uh, it's just gonna make it a little bit sturdier, a little bit more thick, more book-like, which is what I love about this whole technique. Okay, let me put it on the back of this. We need to keep this on here though. Best way to get the glue to move properly. And I'm going to place it down for 30 seconds. You're going to see the fabric start to adhere to the packing paper. Again, I'm on the hottest setting here. I'm not using any water. Not using any water. Just time. <laughs> Just a lot of time. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Feels like Monday today because I missed my Monday, <laughs> my Monday live. It feels like it's not even Tuesday. It looks so pretty. My arm likes to move. And so this, normally I would show my entire process of all the journals that I'm making, but this time that's why I decided this weekend, I'm like, I'm just going to work on these journal covers. So that way on Monday, I only have to work on one 
and then we can get started on actually making them into journals. Thank you, Miss Patricia. You're too kind. Okay, I'm just trying to melt the adhesive on here. And you can tell because the fabric starts to become rather visible in the back. This is a consuming process. <laughs> and there's the whole sewing of all the little stitches in between. One cover could take me over an hour. Yeah, probably over an hour. Yeah, an hour. Half hour stitching, half hour making it into an actual cover. As you can see, I'm right down 20 minutes. <laughs> so I did spend quite, I pretty much spent, I think on Saturday, no. Saturday morning, because I went to go see my family at 1 on Saturday. And I did spend most of Sunday finishing up the stitches on the, on the covers. And I am loving it. We'll see what kind of patchwork I do next. Definitely want to do more of the hex cloth. It's just so time consuming. So time consuming to do the hex hex cloth patchwork. That takes a long time. Melting, making sure we're all good. We're all on this paper here. Can see the outline of it more. And I do plan on making some just regular fabric journals soon too. No patchwork, just same uh, same uh, technique here. But just, just, just regular pieces of fabric. I'll be doing that too soon. Okay, so looks like we're pretty good. You can see a grid on the fabric sometimes, especially the white fabric. You start to see a grid form on it. And that means it has adhered to the heat and bond. I love this stuff. Oh my god, I could I have I can't even tell you how many yards of heat and bond I've gone through in making over a hundred journals probably with heat and bond. Okay. So there we go. Basically, my piece of fabric has now been converted to a piece of paper. Let me cut it out. So let me put my heating. Why do I keep calling it a heating pad? It's a it's a ironing board. <laughs> ironing pad. That is not a heating pad, girl. What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> okay. So, let's cut this out. Ooh, it kind of warped it. Just built slightly. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Put something heavy under it. Huh, how did it get warm? Last time I did like four covers and it didn't move. Okay, well, anyways. Don't iron on top of your cutting board. Okay, lesson learned. Just didn't want to move it so big. Okay, let me put this here. Oh. It was supposed to work out better than this, but it didn't. Cut it here to size. Right now. My grandma's coming from Mexico. I haven't seen her in two years. That lady left and didn't come back till right now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here is the cover. That is, like I said, now paper. Oh my gosh. Right there. Still paper in here. One moment. Now, the inside cover is basically done the same way. 
I cut the fabric to the size of the journal, a quarter inch smaller, all the way around, and then I will um, cut a piece of fabric and then do the same process like I did right now, heat and bond, and then packing paper. So now I need to iron it, or not iron it, I need to sew on it. I'm using a uh, like a uh, blue, yeah, like a dark sky blue, I guess it would be. And uh, what we're gonna do, oh, I finally got the little pad. I finally made a little pad for my um, for my uh, sewing machine so I could slide it around. It is uh, just a piece of felt that I put this piece of, this is actually quilted fabric here. So there's like uh, the batting in between and everything. But I just sewed it to size, stitched around it. So I have a pretty thing to look at so that jagged edged piece of felt that I have. <laughs> Okay, yes, my grandma. I love my grandma. I love my grandma. I gotta give him money. Okay, let's get down here so y'all can see what I'm sewing. It's pretty easy. I'm just sewing in between all the stitches. Just all the stitches. That's all. That's all. Just, just the stitches. Okay, let's get in here so y'all can see what I'm doing. I am literally just gonna sew. And I'm just going to use a zigzag. It's just going to be a little bit big and a little bit small. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'm going to give them money. Okay. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. I'm not going to do this one because this one's going to get tucked in. So my zigzag stitch, and I'm using my um, sewing machine as a project. Project Runway uh, Limited Edition CE1125 PRW, my brother. And I'm using uh, stitch number four with the width of two and a length of four is fine. It's going to be kind of small. Let's see how this works. I'm just sewing right here, like along the, the middle of this. If you guys probably can't see because of the length. But, anyways, that's where I'm stitching just in between. In between the lines of patchwork. Daisy, do you wash your fabric before working with it? Yes, uh, this is all bed sheets from the thrift shop. So as soon as I get home from shopping, I put them in the washing machine on hot. So yes, these are all washed. They're all uh, bed sheets, so they've all been washed before. <laughs> but I do wash them as soon as I get them, yes. long ones here are going to be the easiest. You see I just did a little line of stitching in between where the, where the uh, two lines of patchwork meet. I will do, I'll continue to do the same basically until all these little squares have been outlined. what is called heat and bond ultra hold um, if you don't want to sew on your fabric for your journal. So that is another option. Uh, heat and bond light is to, meant to be sewn onto. Heat and bond ultra hold is not meant to be uh, sewn onto. So just so you know, there is a red one of the heat and bond. I use heat and bond light, which is purple. I did decide to use this zigzag stitch right now because it is the quickest, it is the easiest, and it's the most reliable stitch that I can do. Um, however, I did do fancier stitches on my other covers, which took me a lot longer to do, and I had to go very, very slow. So this feels nice. <laughs> Yeah. 
other stitches were so, so slow. So slow, it's a little ridiculous at points, but if I went any faster, it wouldn't catch all the stitches. So I don't know. I had to do what I had to do. Holly, jolly junk. Hello, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> I promise. You know, they stitch these uh, threads out of here because they do get in my way sometimes. So I like to cut them as I go along. Every journal is going to have a different colored thread on the cover. I just had to go with like six different colors. Okay. Why is that bird is loud? Why is that bird so loud? Nobody saw you here, Holly Dolly. <laughs> oh, God. papers for six journals. Luckily, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I have a, this bird is going nuts out here. My goodness. Somebody be his friend, please. Okay. These are from the fabric, so just cut those off there. Uh, okay, so we did all the log strips. Here comes the hard part. You gotta highlight each individual little little square here so I kind of just go down the line. And then where it goes to the next spot, I move my needle to it. Pick up my needle and move it. Sometimes they go straight down, I get lucky. Sometimes it's like this. This is actually going to get tucked in, but we'll do it anyways. I just move over to it. This one behind my sewing machine here. And then what I have to do is in some of these spots right here, like when I went from here to here, there's a piece of thread here. Cut it so that way you can't see. <laughs> you can't see that I went from here to all the way over here. But anyways, let me uh, see if I can focus this just a little bit. Two and three. Okay. So let's sew the next line here going down. This isn't perfect, so some of the patches are crooked. Just fine. Oh, let me turn off my iron there for a minute. Oops. Whoops. Turn off my iron one second. <laughs> 
I really like the look of your new digital books. Thank you, Miss Safina. I have been having fun lately with my designing. So thank you for noticing. <laughs> And right, the blue really looks cute, huh? I, I liked it in blue, and I also liked it in the green. The green was my favorite. Again, you guys, I have scanned uh, my patchwork covers, so y'all can check them out if you'd like to use them as like your journal pages. I think they would look really cute as journal pages. Um, check it out. I have it's a five-page download, and uh, each of the images is different, and they all have different threads. Like so I. Uh, Scan five of the pages if y'all want to check it out here. And uh, they look really good. I, the green one, of obviously, is still my favorite. I think these would look cute even as little covers for journals, or like I said, you could just put them in the journal as a page. And I really like them. I think they look really cute. Check those out. Okay, so we're going to keep going here. Get these threads off, though. Ugh. Thread is sticking to me. <laughs> yeah. Something else I'll need to buy from your shop. Thank you, April. Really, I appreciate it. Uh, let's sew down this line here. It does have the, the, the look of real fabric, it really does. And I'm, I'm gonna put some in these patchwork journals. <laughs> it's gonna be kind of silly, but I'm gonna put them in there. Because why not? Why not? Why shouldn't I? <laughs> Amazing how a simple change of co a thread color totally changes overall look. Yeah, right? My favorite was green, like top. Hands down. Green looked really cute with all the colors. And if y'all want to check out, um, I do have a link to the threads that I buy. Um, I get them, let me see if I can find the link. I get my thread colors online on Amazon. And I always post, the link is always actually in every single one of my videos. Um, let me see if I can find it though. I guess I don't have it on its own. But it's always in the link to my videos. And uh, I can't tell you which you're going to get, what colors. It's like a random assortment of 24 colored threads. Uh, Myrna, y'all are too kind. Y'all need to stop. You're too nice. <laughs> y'all are too kind. Uh, check out this listing. 24 spools, 1,000 yards, uh, thread. Uh, threads, 24 color threads. There's the link right there if y'all want to check it out. I love that set. I can't tell you what color threads you're going to get. It's literally 24 random colors. And they are random every time. And I have purchased... That set about two or three, no, I think three times now. About three times. And uh, I have loved literally every single color they've sent. I have loved it. Some more than others, obviously. But I have loved the quality. Um, I'm using it just for these covers. 
So I can't tell you how it's going to do for clothes or for anything that actually needs to be, that needs to stay together. <laughs> but for junk journaling, it has really come through for me. I have been able to do so many um, projects with the colors that they've sent me, and I'm so happy. I first got sent that listing from Miss Irina, Miss Crafty Irina. She gifted me, I think, one or two sets. And then I have literally ordered three sets on my own. And I love this. I love this, um, that listing. I have purchased it many, many times. Again, you get 24 random colors. So don't expect to get the ones that I have. Because <laughs> sometimes I don't even get the ones that I have now. I haven't gotten them again. I have finished so many of their spools. Is there a certain brand? I left the link. It's called Hytral cotton sewing thread sets the link is right there and uh it has been great 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 too do i still have full spools yes and usually it's like um the grays and the light grays and what other colors i don't do i don't use let me see let me see uh, so yeah, like gray, and there's like a gold that I have used, and like a really light brown that I haven't used. I also have a duplicate, like really dark navy blue. I have a duplicate of this like golden orange, which I have been using. And uh, they'll send you some colors you'll be surprised that you never knew you liked. Like they have sent me a uh, neon orange, which I never, which for the longest time I was like, you know, what am I going to do with neon orange? But neon orange actually looks really cute against pastels. It almost turns into a pastel itself. It's so pretty. So I have really somehow, somehow I've enjoyed using neon orange. And also neon green. Their neon green is a really cute color thread. Against pastels, it really turns pastel itself. It's so weird. I'm just zigging. I'm just zagging over here. Don't mind me. Just zigzag. Okay. Keep going on down the line. We're already halfway through almost. Ooh, that's great. I've accomplished what I wanted to do tonight. Tomorrow, tonight, I mean, this morning, I mean, today, I mean, right now. Tonight, though, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to cover the journals with the fabric or if I'm going to work on the inside fabric. Hmm. Hmm. That remains to be seen. I don't know yet what we're going to do tonight. Because I needed to build. But I don't know which one I'm going to do first. <laughs> if I do need to do both, though. Again, this type of uh, quilting technique is, it's, like, if you look up uh, receipt paper quilt, you will see a bunch of people sewing their stuff on receipt paper. I did this a while ago. If I can find a video, I'll leave a link to it. But there's other people that might have better tips for you or whatever. I'm just using it for junk journals. Other people use it for actual quilts. So they might be a little bit like better at it or like more evenly. I don't know. I didn't really care if I did went crooked or anything. So that <laughs> that's how I did it. I always do the the quilts, uh, the quilt techniques that don't have to like line up. Uh, Angel Fish says, I used my ruffler foot the other day and thought of you. <laughs> because I am yet to figure out my ruffler foot. Oh my gosh. Oh, I need it. I need to take another crack at it. I really do. I really do. <laughs> You're funny, Angel Fish. <laughs> I love it though. I'm glad you, I got, I'm glad it works for somebody. <laughs> I just could not figure it out, but you know what? That's okay. I don't really, I try not to fault myself for not being perfect at things the first time. <laughs> but I have, I have put that project off, off to the side table for a while. And I should probably get to it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Should probably will do sometime. <laughs> I still use Daisy's way. It's so much easier. I feel like, you know, slow and steady and you get them all evenly sized. <laughs> To me, it's a relaxing process. But I'm sure once I learn how to use the ruffler foot, it'll seem a little uh, daunting afterwards. Put it over just a tiny bit here. Oops, I missed this one right here. Oops. Can I go back? Maybe I can go back. We'll cut this thread off later. Okay, cool. I have never actually done that before, like gone back and then came forward. <laughs> yes, it still works. That's right. Still works. It took me a while to figure out too. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not the only one. So here I normally don't go this far away, right? but then I'll just cut off these threads. And this whole thing, this whole cover is gonna be glued glued down so I don't really have to worry about like things lifting off. I really don't do um, back stitching or anything on this cover because again everything's gonna get glued down and you're not gonna be able to pull out any stitches once I'm done with this cup. So it's all good. It's all good. This is the last one of the last lines here I gotta do. Let's get it done. Do enjoy making these patchwork covers. It's actually it's a lot of fun to see it come from you know pieces of fabric to be in a whole piece of fabric. Okay, okay, I am done. I am done. Like I said tonight. Sorry, I touched the camera. Tonight I'll be back to either glue these to the covers or we're gonna make the inside covers. I haven't decided yet. I don't know yet. But um, do join me tonight. I'll go live again at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to um, show you all how I did this. Again, I am making six junk journals, and uh, I have already worked on all the covers. I worked on all the covers this weekend. Scan them, so if you want to check them out on my shop, you can print them out. Uh, have you ever done a telly on how many journals you have made over the years? I number my journals. Right now, I'm on number 115. And I think there was like a handful of journals that I made before that that I didn't number. So maybe like 125. I don't think I've made more than 125. So I think about 125, I want to say. <laughs> so anyways, you guys, thank you so much for joining me here on this live when I got this done. I want to show you all kind of step by step what it is that I'm doing. And uh, I will see you all tonight uh, for the next step here. I have to cut these threads here, the ones where I traveled gotta cut those off but anyways you guys have a good day i'm gonna go see my mother now and i uh, will come hang out with y'all again tonight so come check me out and if you haven't subscribe i do pretty much post a new video every single day and thank you all so much uh to those who purchased from my store i really really appreciate your support um but if all you do is watch and comment then i thank you guys so much for your support in that way and I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you guys uh, for hanging out with me today. And I'll see y'all tonight. Have a good day. Bye.